Hello everyone and welcome to Sunburned Albino Ranks Every Souls Game from Worst to Best, which is going to be the Demon Souls remake, because that's the one I played, all three Dark Souls games, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and latest but not least, Elden Ring. I have played all of these games within the past five years, so none of the memories are too ancient or nostalgia heavy, and I'm just really excited for my order to piss everyone off. The comments are going to be a blast, and my wrists are going to stay perfectly intact. Why wait and save the controversy for later? Let's open the damn video with it. Number 7, Dark Souls. The worst Souls game, in my probably wrong opinion, is the original Dark Souls, and like I always say, I did it to myself by playing them out of order. I didn't play Dark Souls until I already had ample time with Dark Souls 2, 3, and Bloodborne, and if you do that, you're just not going to have a great time going back to what is comparatively a clunky old slog. It is purely self-inflicted, just like the aforementioned wounds I'll be giving myself when you get mad at me. I have no doubt it was a seminal work but I just liked every other Souls game way better. The drop-off here is pretty significant. If we were doing tiers, I'd put Dark Souls in D, while everything else got at least a B. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go buy sunglasses and a wig. Number 6, Demon Souls Remake. The Demon Souls Remake looks absolutely tremendous, and I like the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay for the most part, but if nobody told you this was a one-to-one -one remake of an old game instead of just a new game, you'd still figure it out pretty quickly. There's a lot of archaic stuff still in here, from awful gimmick bosses to the six different levels of grasses being annoying to farm and sort through, to world tendency being a thing that exists and discouraging you from even playing the game at full capacity because dying while human does so many negative things the game prefers to show rather than and tell. Demon's Souls probably more than any other Souls game is a game you have to be in the know to enjoy, otherwise you might find yourself wondering why a nigh unkillable red phantom is constantly assaulting you every time you respawn at a particular bonfire after you unknowingly shifted the world tendency to its max negative state by mistakenly thinking it was okay to play the game with full health and two flexible ring slots. Number 5, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. It's no secret if you've been around this channel for a while that I did not mesh with Sekiro's game mechanics. For all my musical background, Sekiro is one rhythm game I just couldn't beat. Get it? Beat? Front page of YouTube, hello, waiting by the phone. I loved running around, killing regular enemies, and doing stealth shenanigans, but some of the bosses were just out of my league. I've seen people fight the final one in his three phases, and I'm like, yeah, that's okay, I'll stay back here. No harm in cheering from the sidelines, I don't gotta be the hero in every adventure. Sekiro is the least Soulsy game here. No weapon variety, no builds, really. Barely deserves to even be grouped among these clear-cut Souls games, but from software made it so it gets by on a technicality. Number four, Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 is a great game. I'm not here to convince you otherwise, but I don't like replaying it as much as the other games coming up. By the end of it, I was kind of fatigued of Souls games in that particular setting, like the same fantasy dragons and medieval renaissance stuff. I hoped then, and still hope now, even though I like Elden Ring, that they'd do another Bloodborne type of deal with changing the setting but keeping everything else mostly intact, which they did not do with Sekiro. Give me pure Dark Souls, but in sci-fi or mythology or anime, but like better than Code Vein, even though I thought Code Vein was alright. Number three, Bloodborne. Bloodborne is goaded. Terrific setting, fast, shieldless action, trick weapons for cool variety on the fly, although you really have to pick a weapon or two and stick with it, and it's annoying how sometimes your build can't even begin until you're almost at the end of the game, or in the Burial Blades case, after the game's already frickin' over. If Bloodborne ever comes to PC, the only mod I'll ever give a damn about, aside from a randomizer, is one that makes you able to just choose whichever starting weapon you want out of any of them. You beat the game already. You earned it. Let me see that pizza cutter chow down on the cleric beast. Dig into that nice saucy deer blood. Let me at that Rakuyo without having to fight an Olympic swim team at the bottom of a well near the end of the DLC. I want Father Gascoin getting his blindfold shot off by Simon's bow blade. Bloodborne is a classic at this point, but I think it's been a little too long since I said something outlandish, so number two, Dark Souls 2. It's just my favorite one, you know? It's the one I started with, the one that provided me an introduction to the Souls series that I promptly refunded the first time I died twice and permanently lost all my souls, but luckily I rebought it a few months later and managed to get properly hooked this time. I know some people don't like the action of it, but I still think it beats the hell out of the original. Friendly PSA, since 20% of you don't know this, according to every time I mention it. But invincibility frames are tied to your agility stat in this game, which heavily scales with adaptability and lightly scales with attunement. You get agility near to 100, and you'll be forgivingly rolling through attacks like you're used to again in no time. 
Dark Souls 2 has my preferred stat growth system, minus the need for agility, because you don't need HP or much of the stat that increases equip load unless you're going full heavy armor, which I don't do because I start every playthrough by killing the merchant so I can wear his full light Seldora set where each piece increases the amount of souls you get. But anyway, you can just pour levels into strength or dexterity or magic right out of the gate and get super OP in a flash. Dark Souls 2 is fun to boot up every once in a while and steamroll, and I think being able to reinforce armor is a nice thing that should be re-implemented in other games. You play Elden Ring and wear the fattest armor imaginable and still get two-shot and you're like, damn, this shit made of plastic? Would be nice if you could make it actually do something. Number 1. Elden Ring the sheer content, multiple humongous areas, over a hundred boss encounters, dungeons out the wazoo, NPCs for days, hundreds of weapons of all different kinds for any kind of build. You need a magic sword, you got one. A fire sword, you got one. A holy sword, a lightning sword. There's never been a better time to be a hybrid class because every weapon type has like three different intelligence, faith, and arcane variants. You're missing out if you're not running magic, even if you don't use any spells. The weapons are just godly. Every boss is a surgeon with attacks and combos waiting to surgically strike the ass end of your panic rolls invincibility running out, the AI is smarter than ever before. For better or worse, depending on your point of view, sometimes your actions literally trigger instant reactions from them. It wasn't bad luck that that dude threw a fireball right when you tried to heal at mid-range. He was programmed to wait for it. As a result, this game has some of the hardest bosses in Souls history, unequivocally, and even the lesser fights can be more frustrating than usual. I remember it took me about 13 hours to do pretty much everything in Bloodborne and its DLC the last time I played. It took me 57 hours to do like 80% of Elden Ring. You can definitely say there are things to like better about other Souls games, like the more streamlined areas with less aimless wandering, which Elden Ring also has, but they're definitely more spread apart, or having a thousand percent less dragons, for instance, or not needing to put 35 points in vigor to not get one shot during the late game, but Elden Ring is just such a big, complete package that it makes me blush and play with my hair. Well, that's gonna do it for this ranking. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can check out Sunburned Albino on Twitter and Twitch. Watch every other video I've ever made with one arm tied behind your back, and I'll see you guys next time.